without further ado, I'd like to present to you the director of the Public Relations Program here at St. John's University, College of Professional Studies best professor, Steve Jones. He has two pairs, two sets of two pairs of two. Two pairs of two tickets for tonight's game at Carnesecca. So my next question, I'm gonna ask. I don't know about your PR people, you know. I mean, he teaches a class, but do you really know the definition of what public relations is? So, whoever can come up with the best definition gets these two pairs of tickets. Professor Jarman, why, why public relations? You know, what, what, what was your interest? You know, what made you get into it? Was it a mentor that you had? Uh, was it, you know, maybe a show that you watched in a business meeting? Or I don't know, what, what was it? So I come from a long line of dentists. My father was a dentist. My uncle, two of my uncles are dentists. My brother's a dentist. So the natural assumption was that, well, you know, Steve will be a dentist too. Until I raised my hand one day and said, you know, that's not going to be for me. I knew that being in the world of communications was something I was interested in from a very long time ago. Uh, was particularly a big television fan, but always loved uh, the news and culture and, you know, gossip and sports and, and being sort of part of you know social currency and I knew that somewhere in the world of communications was going to be my place. I want to know what made you think of coming up with putting a fact on a cat you know like what what stemmed that idea? It's a great question even though it's just a it's a really fun idea the way the idea came out and it came out completely by accident I don't pretend that I thought about it for a long time and I was waiting for just the right moment to, to spill the beans but we were talking about repositioning the brand Snapple and the brand had been doing pretty well but um, had sort of plateaued and we wanted to bring it up to the next level. Folks your age were drinking it less and how are we going to make it more relevant? And um, Snapple's always claimed to be made from the best stuff on earth, 100% natural and even the word natural has evolved as to what that means over time. But we were all about being real and being true. So we knew that there was sort of this ritual, people that drink a Snapple usually give it a light shake, they pop the bottom to break that uh, the seal, and then they pop the top off. So we said, well, what can we make of that? There's something to that. People don't open a Coke that way. They don't open bottled water that way. But for some reason, the Snapple thing was sort of this gestalt. And one of the natural reactions is that when people pop that top off, they look under the cap. And for years before we had the real facts, they, we would do a summer promotion there of some sort and had done fairly well. And one day I just sort of blurted out, well, why don't we put these little factoids that people could be talking about, you know, in the office, at school, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, you know the room went silent for about what seemed like an hour and a half, but it was probably a second or two. <laughs> and uh, so I said, that's a pretty cool idea. Maybe we should do this. It just sort of built on it. And now there are hundreds and hundreds of Snapple facts. I don't <clears throat> profess to have written any of them. Uh, we had our public relations agency come up with all of them, as a matter of fact. And uh, it's just turned out to be a really big idea. We went on to do those page a day calendars, and we did the kids board game a number of years ago, and it licensed and it ended up being a real money maker. But it was a strategic decision to really capitalize on real and facts and trying to tie that concept back to the brand. You know, a lot of people don't know that uh, public relations is a part of crisis management. So when, you know, when an artist or an actor or some celebrity goes down the wrong path, they need public relations and their officials to help them get back. Can you explain like how, what are some steps that they do to get back to where they were prior sure. to that fall? Sure. What we now call incident management, it used to be called crisis intervention. So the idea is that, you know, celebrities and brands and whatever, when they misstep, they want to get back on top. They want to make sure they don't alienate any of their, their fans or their followers. So the idea is, what, what do they need to do? What do they need to do to re-engage you? Do they need to apologize? Do they need to show you that they're doing community service? Do they need to give money to an organization? So again, it's a very strategic process. How will we properly message them? Uh, there was a rumor when I was at Snapple that uh, right after 9-11, as a matter of fact, that said that Osama bin Laden owned Snapple and it was written uh, in the Wall Street Journal. And everybody said, well, the Wall Street Journal, if it's written there, it's it must be true. It's a credible source. It's a credible source. It's more than that. It's, it's a, you know, a haloed source. Um, and make a long story short, it took us about eight months to work our way out of that rumor, which was not true, but it had been reported in a credible source. And what the truth of the, the nugget was is that Osama bin Laden was one of 41 step siblings. And one of his brothers did own a less than 5% share in a beverage distributor in Saudi Arabia that sold about three bottles of Snapple in a year. But it got translated as that Osama bin Laden owned Snapple. See what the media does. See what the media Try does. So you need to be very careful with your words. You have to use choice words. Um, not say too much, but certainly not say too little. 
So what is the you know the best advice that you can give someone who wants a job in public relations? The first thing is not to wait until you graduate. So I'm a big, big fan of internships, whether they be for just the experience or for academic credit. The other thing that I always encourage, and we do this as part of my classes routinely, is uh, taking a look at what jobs are available out there. So checking out the po you know, Reagan's and PR Daily and Bulldog Reporter and Media Bistro and looking at some of those things. And I see you laughing and snickering, but they're really important to take a look at. What kinds of jobs are out there at the senior level, at the mid-manager level, at the entry level? because even though you may not be ready for those jobs now, you start to get a picture as to what might be available. From a public relations standpoint, what do you think that he should do about the situation that he's in right now? So if I was providing public relations advice, I would say that he should look at the public relations advice that he's been providing for the last few years. Because I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really good job. I think that he's done a really I think the newest one was a, a rape charge back from 1982, if I heard that this morning. Um, so I think he needs to lay very low because he has been on a pedestal for so long that we might give him permission to fail if he comes out and says, after he's thought this through with his team in a very sort of carefully constructed either acknowledgement or some thing, he will not be able to deny this forever. It just it just won't work. Now that we're we've sort of grabbed onto it, this is not going to completely go away until some appropriate comments are made. Do you think it is better to work in-house or with uh, PR agents? I don't think one is better than the other. What I, what I think is a great idea um, is to work for an agency first so that you have the chance maybe to work on multiple accounts, learn about all sorts of different industries so that you are learning about maybe automotive and technology and pharmaceutical and, and sort of getting the lay of the land. And then after you've had several years of experience, moving on perhaps to the client side or to a media company or that kind of thing. So I think both experiences are wonderful. Agencies tend to attract younger, uh, more social kinds of people, people that are willing to work longer hours. Um, they don't pay as well typically as the client side or the corporate side, but I think you can't go wrong. But if a student asks me if they have a choice between one or the other, I usually encourage them for an agency position first.